Yeah, sure, adding two numbers together is easy, but if you're talking about Hannah's Sweets and Dave's Crisps, suddenly it gets a lot harder. It's called Solving Problems and we're covering it today. Solving problems is like eating a cake. Don't eat the whole cake at once. Cut it up into manageable slices and take your time. Jamie is tiling a wall. The wall is 3 metres by 8 metres. Each tile is 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres. Tiles cost £14 for a pack of 12. He already has 20 tiles. How much will it cost Jamie to tile his wall? If this feels like a lot of words, remember it's a cake that needs to be cut up into slices. Let's start by figuring out what the question is asking. Here at the bottom we can see it's asking how much will it cost Jamie to tile his wall. Next, what information in the question will we need? So, the first part is that the wall is 3 metres by 8 metres. Each tile is 50 centimetres by 50 centimetres. Tiles cost £14 for a pack of 12 and he already has 20 tiles. So let's write this information down so that we can just use this information rather than being bogged down by all the other words in the question. Can we convert any units? We can see that the wall is in metres, yet the tile is in centimetres, so let's convert the tile into metres. 50 centimetres is half a metre, 0.5 metres. What maths can we do to answer the question? So first of all, I'm going to write down, or I'm going to draw a diagram of the wall. But you can see that I've actually drawn the squares in. And that just helps me visualise what we're dealing with here. So we've got 3 metres down and 8 metres across. So I've just done it with 3 squares and 8 squares. We know each tile will be half a metre. So instead of 8 across, it's going to be 16 across. And instead of 3 up, it's going to be 6 up. So I'm going to draw a diagram for that. Okay, and I'm just going to copy that onto here so we get a bit more space. Next, we need to ask ourselves how many tiles are there in total? So there's 16 across and 6 up, so that's going to be 16 times 6, 96 tiles in total. Next, we need to figure out the number of tiles we will need to buy. Well, he says he already has 20 tiles, so we just need to take the 20 away from the 96, so we need 76 tiles. So we need to go to the shop and buy 76 tiles. But the tiles are sold in packs of 12. So we need to figure out how many packs we need. So we're going to do 76 divided by 12. Now the problem here is we get 6.3 recurring. You can't walk into the shop and ask for a third of the pack. They do not like that. So you might be tempted to round down because 6.3 rounds down to 6. But we don't round down with these types of questions. Because if you think about it, if we round it down, there'll be a patch on the wall without any tiles. So we need to buy as many packs as we need to fill the full amount of tiles that we need. So with these questions, we'll always round up. So we'll need to get seven packs in total. And finally, we're looking for the cost that he's going to um, pay. And we know each pack is £14. So we're just going to do 7 times 14, which is £98 in total. The final step of this question is just check that the answer feels correct. Do you think roughly it's going to cost about £98 to buy these tiles? And that feels right to me. If the question was, or if the answer was 49 pence, would that feel correct? Probably not. That would be very, very cheap for tiles. If the answer was £17 billion, would this feel correct? Well, I'm going to level with you. If it was £17 billion for that amount of tiles, I would quit teaching and make tiles full-time. Let's finish this topic with this question. Cars are 4 metres long and a section of road is 20 metres long. Why is it unlikely to ever see five cars queued up in this section of road? If you know, write it in the comments below. And you can check out our website on maths.com or click the link in the description. You can access all of our papers and predictions for free and you can even save your scores with a free account. This video is part of a larger GCSE course that you can follow along at onmaths.com.